everyone, I'm Mariah. Thanks for joining. And today, Adam and I will be talking about how and when to set up advanced alerting using cloud functions for Crashlytics, performance monitoring, and app distribution. Keeping your users happy is critical to your app success. And app quality plays a major role in that happy meter. Knowing your app's stability and performance from the user's perspective is critical, especially when your users are running your app on a complex ecosystem of devices, form factors, and OS versions. The key to keeping your users happy from an app quality perspective is fixing issues early and fast. Now, this may come as a surprise to some of you, but humans are impatient. Instead of waiting for something to load that may be taking longer than usual, users often jump to an alternative option that serves a similar purpose. Development teams are moving fast and have limited time, so it's not always practical to watch Crashlytics and performance monitoring dashboards to catch every issue as soon as it happens. So how do we fix issues in our app before that human impatience steps in? With real-time alerts. Let's take a deep dive into a few advanced alerting use cases so that you can learn about how to send real-time alerts to virtually any platform with any configuration you'd like outside of Firebase. Hey, y'all. I'm Adam, a software engineer working on Crashlytics, and I'd like to start off with a story. Uh, next slide. Imagine we work on an e-commerce app. The team knows that the winter, day holiday, the winter holiday season is coming. It's the best time of year for sales, and any hiccups have the potential to cause impact to the company's reputation and finances. So we work hard, get all our features complete, submit our app to the store, and it goes live. After a few weeks, the holiday break is in full swing. Alex, it's right there in, in the center, <laughs> our PM, decides to open the Crashlytics dashboard and check on the stability of the latest release. He discovers that crashes aren't actually appearing in the Crashlytics dashboard because a critical debug symbol file for the app wasn't uploaded. At this point, customers are having a terrible experience and most of the team is off for the remainder of the year. It's a scramble to get the DSIM file uploaded, and a backlog of crashes starts showing up on the Crashlytics dashboard. The on-call engineer unfortunately ends up spending their holiday triaging bugs, while the rest of the team is off enjoying their holiday break. What if there was a simple way to get notified of the missing DSIM file the very first time a crash happens? I'd like to show y'all a quick demo of a brand new missing DSIM alert connected to a Discord channel via a Firebase Cloud function. First, let's take a quick look at the code. So at the top, we have our imports from the Firebase Functions SDK. And we're going to import a few um, simple types that are going to wrap the concepts that we're going to deal with. The last thing that we need to import is the node fetch package, because we're going to end up making an HTTP request. The entry point to our function is uh, on lines 8 to 23. And its responsibility is to basically call another function to build a post body and then actually make the post request. We build the post body with the build missing symbols post function. Its responsibility is to extract data from the incoming payload, and then format it into a JSON blob that we're going to post to the Discord webhook API. The last piece that we need is to build a deep link back into the Crashlytics dashboard so that we can upload our DSIM file when we get the alert. Right here, we're maintaining a map from our app ID to some other relevant details that we need to build the URL. So we take the incoming ID, do the lookup, get the details, format the URL, and return it. That's it. So we have a total of 73 lines of code, including comments. And let's see how it works. So how do we deploy our function? 
I'm sure y'all have been sitting here all day and seen something similar to this several times. Uh, so if I run the deploy, a couple things are going to happen. First, we're going to see TypeScript to JavaScript compilation and linting. Second, we're going to see that the necessary APIs are enabled for our project. And third, we're going to see the function actually get deployed. The first time you deploy your function, it can take 90 seconds, maybe two minutes total. Fortunately, I've deployed this function and haven't changed it, so we have a step that skips that deployment for us. So everything's ready to go. Let's try it out. Here I have a Discord channel. Say our team uses Discord for communication. This is where we'd like to see the alert show up. And over here I have my very fancy complicated test app. If I crash the app and relaunch it, and hopefully the live demo fairies are going to help us out, we'll see the alert pop up in Discord. <laughs> Clicking the link should take us directly to the Firebase dashboard where we can drag and drop upload our dsim file. So we have some really cool tools that we can use to customize our alerting. We switch back to the slides. In addition, if we're willing to do a little more work than just the Firebase Deploy CLI, we can even choose one of the other languages that is supported by Google Cloud Functions, uh, including .NET, Java, Go, PHP, Python, and Ruby. Crashlytics, performance monitoring, and app distribution are already generating a bunch of the alerts waiting to be handled by your function like a new tester device for map distribution, crossing a threshold for performance monitoring, new velocity alerts from Crashlytics, and more. I hope you have a chance to try out your own function today. Let's look at another use case around using cloud functions for Firebase. Let's say we built a gaming app that helps people learn Spanish. We've been live for a while, and we are using our app distribution to share new releases with our remote QA team before we publish them to the stores. And things are running smoothly. Just as we're getting ready for a big update, new iOS devices get released. To keep up with the market, we need to test our app on these, uh, using these devices as well. Thankfully, we're able to arrange getting these new devices into the hands of our testers. We're really tight on time for our big release, so no time can be lost. As our testers begin setting up their new devices, they quickly realize that they can't test the app anymore. The new devices haven't been registered for use with our test app, so the release won't work for them yet. The iOS testing process requires us to get the device IDs for each test device, which can be a bit painful. So how will we test our app properly on these new test devices, get all of the device IDs, and still meet our release date? Hmm. Fortunately, with real-time alerting and app distribution, our app developers will be alerted of the device IDs immediately so that we can, they can quickly repackage their app, go straight to testing, and de-risk the launch. We can notify our developers by email or by leveraging cloud functions for Firebase to integrate with Discord or Slack as examples in the same manner we've seen for Crashlytics. All three products support advanced alerting, giving you practically full power over where you send alerts, how, to whom, and more. These products also support classical email alerting. Crashlytics additionally supports basic alerting capabilities with third-party integrations like Slack, Jira, and PagerDuty. We encourage you to set up alerts with these products if you haven't already and try it out. Thanks for taking time to learn about the power of cloud functions for Firebase. We look forward to supporting your teams to building and maintaining high-quality apps. Please join us in the Axe Firebase Lounge to ask any questions. Thank you. Thank you.